I've come to realize over the course of my life that I'm often trying to prove my worth in a lot of ways, in a, a total variety of ways. And then one of the biggest ones, one of the ones that has come back again and again is showing my sense of worth or trying to prove it through work. My work as my value personally and through productivity and whatever else. And that's one of the things I want to talk about today, but also over the course of season eight, which is what we're starting today. Hey, woo! Season eight of, uh, of my vlog is this last chapter where I actually had to take three months off, stop filming, and a lot of things culminated all at the same time by doing that. So that's kind of the goal for season eight for me is actually to, to break it down over the course of the next 20 episodes, more or less, what I've been dealing with off screen, especially in the last few months, but over the last few years and the culmination of that into where I feel like I'm in probably the happiest, healthiest place I may have ever been in my entire life, which is kind of crazy to think. Like I never would have described myself as a happy person before. Uh, and I guess I would now, which is, Kind of weird. Figured a good place to start would be with the idea that my productivity is directly tied to my sense of self-worth or value as a human being. There are some changes to talk about, like with Patreon, the credits and so forth. Make sure to stick around to the end if you're a patron to see your name at the end of this. Also speaking of patron producers, thanks to Janae Escabel, uh, one of my glorious patrons who left a very nice comment on one of my last vlogs over on Patreon. And if you haven't become a patron yet and you might like to get a patron shout out, it doesn't hurt your chances to leave me compliments. I'll just put it that way. I'm not fishing for compliments, I'm just saying. I mean, nice, nice, nice begets nice, right? And there's a lot that's been going on actually, like rugby games and stand-up comedy on boats and just a lot of good stuff uh, in the last two weeks. And I, for the, you know, season eight of the vlog, my intention is not to uh, lapse over a week's worth of uh, stuff going on, but like pff, my dad being here is a great thing to lapse over, so. We're just gonna do it the best we can. Oh, but first, I gotta get ready for uh, my dad's arrival, because fast forward back to, back. we're going back in time. He's standing behind the camera now, but he wasn't before. You'll get it, you'll see it in a minute. I have a number of things that I need to get done before my dad gets here. My dad is arriving in a few hours. Yeah, actually like, yeah, like four hours I think from now, which is really exciting. I cannot wait to have him here. And I'm feeling very lucky to get to see him twice in a matter of like three months. He's traveling through to Nepal, uh, for an event there for what he does for work. Uh, I'm lucky enough that he's able to take a little hop and a skip through Paris both directions. So I'm gonna get to see him both ways, which is really great. But before he gets here, I have a number of things I need to do. I need to get all my postcards sent to my patrons. I'm a little bit behind on my postcard and print club, so I'm gonna write on the backs of a whole bunch of postcards, get those sent. Thankfully, Kate already did stamping and addressing for that, which makes my life so much easier. Thank you, Kate. And of course, thanks to my patrons. I need to find a location for the shoot that we're gonna do with him tomorrow. I sure I wanted to practice some outdoor lit portrait shots and I uh, thought we would have some fun with my dad doing that. Also getting ready for some stuff in the future. So that should be fun. Gotta find a location for that. Gotta go do a little bit of grocery shopping. I need to make my dad a nice little, you know, welcome package. So I'll give him my AeroPress and some coffee filters to make sure that he has coffee in the morning. Grind a little bit of coffee for him and put it in a spare coffee bag for him. Gonna buy some bananas, some apples. I don't know what else he might need, but I think bananas and apples and coffee should get him started in the morning just fine. He's a light eater in the morning. And of course he can always wander and find his own pastries fresh every morning. Almost forgot the guest Navigo. So I think that that should get him up and ready to go. Then I meet my buddy Corey for coffee and hopefully we'll be able to wrangle a spare bike for my dad from Bike About and bring that back. And that way he has a bike while I have a bike uh, and we can bike around town because that was his number one thing last time he just wished, I think, I, well, I will have to ask him, but I think that was one of the main things that he felt was missing was that we didn't get on bikes sooner and he would have enjoyed that a lot more. So pretty cold for biking, but that's okay. It's not that bad. So anyways, that's all I have to get done before he shows up at 5.30 or 6. But then I thought I would just welcome you to season eight. I, I wanna dive right into it. I, I've missed vlogging and I can't wait to get started. Uh, but we, we should probably get going. Hey! Oh, pizza's a good idea. Oh. How are ya? Hey. This is for you. Oh, the phone? There you go. Oh, you. Some A starter kit for you. Wow. Ah, cool. This is actually more spacious than I would have guessed. And this is for you. Ooh, all of it? Everything that's in it. What? Really? Wow. Well, everything in there is for you, so there you go. Thanks. Wow, this is quite... Whoa! My expectations are very low because you said that you wouldn't be able to bring any Juanitas. So I did not expect that. 
and the best chips in the world. Wow, thank you. And look at all these Christmas presents. Well, I'll have to keep those until Christmas. And then this well, is exciting. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's amazing. You cannot get ibuprofen in large quantities like this in Paris. And actually, I just, I literally this morning took my last pill from my giant bottle. So this will last me until your next visit. Thanks, Karn and Kevin. That's exciting. Wow. I I did not expect it to be like this. chips and my favorite salsa fresh salsa I gotta get it in the fridge I should have put it in the fridge right away but you know coffee is served thank you and I also noticed you might be lacking in sunglasses well oh nice <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah. Now that you've had your coffee, I wanted to ask you, what was there one thing that was missing last time you were here? No. Really? No. I mean, it was great getting around on the metro, and maybe, maybe, maybe one more, maybe, maybe riding bicycles a little more. That would have been fun. That's kind of what I was going for, because I have one for you downstairs. So, oh, cool. so you're set. All right. When we leave, yeah. Apparently, he's fine. <laughs> It is the best way to get around, even if it's a little bit chilly. I had a good conversation with my buddy Amber this morning that reminded, she reminded me, I mean, she, she saw right through me, but one of the things that I was struggling with in the past and that made the transition in how I dealt with vlogging and YouTube and everything else really hard is that I tend to see my value as being directly tied to what I bring to a relationship or to an audience. And inherently that gets tied to the value of my work. Like, hey, I'm putting in the effort, I'm being productive, I'm showing up, I'm doing what I can. And that inherently gives me value in that mindset, which is not healthy and not true, uh, but is definitely one that's stuck with me. How are you doing back there? Doing all right. All right. But then I wouldn't enter into a relationship, a friendship, business relationship, anything without feeling like I had something substantial to offer going into it, which is just not a healthy way to, I mean, for business that makes sense, but for personal relationships that is not a healthy way to approach anyone. You, I guess one of the things I've had to learn over the last few years and really, really has taken a while to settle in is that idea that I'm just inherently valuable as I am, whether or not I have anything in hand to offer in coming into any relationship. That's been really important. I'm also hoping that the wind isn't too terrible right now. How's that bike treating you? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah? The seat's a little low, but it's a good way to work out. That's good. <laughs> Having yeah. fun. It'll keep you awake. Yes, so that's basically a protection that they put around the stained glass. So then it's plastic sheeting to keep it. They've removed all the stained glass. You can see it's all gone. So they've removed it all to clean it. And then that, the square stuff is just protective. Yeah, ceiling. So the white isn't new concrete. It's just a... Exactly. It's like giant masking tape. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
And you know, realizing that ultimately the whole idea of working harder is fraught. I don't want to go so far as to say it's a lie, but within the American dream, the idea that you can hustle, again, you can pull yourself up by the bootstraps. In realizing that that's not the case, what do you do with that? How do you go about actually like making money and climbing up the ladder, like trying to improve your life, rising in socioeconomic status? Whatever that looks like, the, all the things like you know, if 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 hard work was all it took to get rich, then all parents would be incredibly wealthy. Uh, especially seeing how hard my sister and her husband are working now that they've adopted a couple of kids, they it's 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 a, it's a lot of work. Ditch diggers would be billionaires, and and do you think the billionaires really work that much harder than the rest of us? All those kinds of questions are really, really important. And in recognizing that and taking a step back, that's one of the huge benefits and blessings. And I'm so fortunate that I'm lucky enough to have been able to take some time off to reflect, to work on myself and to prep for coming back to vlogging. Um, you know, it hasn't been a total vacation the last few months, but to really take a step back and think about it, coming back into this, I never want to work myself to death again. No more 18 hour work days, no more you know, weekendless living. I've built weekends back into my life. I'm starting to build exercise and sleep and friends back into my life. I absolutely want to keep that going for the rest of my life. How do I build a life that I want to live and stop obsessing over something that I really have no control over either? You know how the time warp used to be a thing that I lived in when I was vlogging daily and I think affected you in some ways too, where I never knew what day it was and I was always posting about the day behind what had happened in front. Anyways, having my dad here was a lot of fun and I thought I'd make it a fun experience for him too. Printemps, uh, the department store next to Galerie Lafayette had just opened their Christmas windows and Galerie Lafayette's weren't open yet, but I took my dad down to check those out and see a little bit of old school Christmas decoration. They put a lot of work in, Santa's elves working very hard. And then I took him to a vegan taco tattoo party, which is one of my favorite phrases that I've uttered in the last couple of weeks, where our buddy Mario was making That's some of the most vegan. delicious, it doesn't matter, put the vegan out of your head if you're anti-vegan, like it, it, unbelievably good food. His food is always so good. Not a lot of it. So good. The vegan taco tattoo party kind of a night. And the vegan, this is a bao, a vegan bao taco. Spicy? Good. And unfortunately, he is leaving Paris for a while, and I cannot wait for him to come back. Australia, you're getting him. Please give him back. Uh, but you can follow him at uh, New Wave Tacos on Instagram, and it's worth it if you're in Australia or back in Paris. So worth it to eat his food every time I've had it. It is unbelievable. And then our buddy Mel was doing tattoos upstairs, so if we went upstairs above the bar, there was a tattoo party going on, and she does hand poke tattoos, so they're very slow, meticulous, handcrafted, amazing tattoos. Uh, it was just a really, really cool experience all around. And we stayed out obviously super late uh, as a result. to get my dad a PCR test before he flew to Nepal. Hunting for a little lunch before we need to get this guy a PCR test before he flies to Nepal. It's a rule, it's what they require. Uh, and it's really hard to do on a holiday weekend, it turns out. Not a lot of, most of the labs are closed, so we'll see how that goes. But first, take him to a little bit of a covered passage for some delicious gyoza is the plan. We'll see. Said they were a little bit late for service. They won't see us, and we want to sit. So there's not really a park near here to eat either. Gyoza is what I wanted, but we'll find something else here. The nice thing about coming to a place like this is that if the one thing you don't want doesn't work out, there's literally a dozen other options right next door. We were just talking on the train about, uh, or on the metro over here, about you know those the stats that are going around about everybody quitting their jobs right now, and how people are realizing that maybe hustling an extra 20 hours a week for not much more 
isn't worth spending the rest of your life hustling. I think there's kind of like an awakening going on with all this to maybe the fact that, you know, there's some life to live that doesn't involve working literally all the time. This kitchen up here is huge. This is the first time uh, since I've vlogged that I've just vlogged. Oh, bad timing on the spacing here going down the stairs. Like when I first moved here, I had like four jobs, pretty sure. I've always had multiple jobs. Never been able to just make it on one. It's a different time of my life. That looks great. You, did you wait for me? I did. Oh, you're so nice. But dive in. Well, I did sip the Oh, that's good. That's good. I, well, that's what I want to hear. When I was vlogging, I didn't set out to... It wasn't a job. It was a side thing. It was a side project. It was fun. There was no money involved. There was a lot of extra work. But the reason I stuck with it was because I really enjoyed it. It was an expression, a creative expression. Something that I've just always loved doing. But when I was in the States, I had multiple jobs to support myself. When I got to Paris, I had multiple jobs teaching, tour guiding, consulting for like tech startups on Kickstarter stuff, like a whole bunch of random stuff to make ends meet. And then when I transitioned and I was able to do this full time, I didn't stop doing that because I thought, oh, well, I have to keep working. I have to fill all my space and time with work, so I'll fill it with new projects, side projects, secret projects. And I just never gave myself time or space to live. And that's something that has to change. It has changed. Thankfully, the last few months have been huge for that, but can't keep that pace up forever. And, and, and why keep that pace up forever? And what? Well, I was just gonna say, quick coffee here to, to perk up a little bit more. Lunch was great, but we gotta go um, get this guy his PCR test, which is running us all over town. So uh, there aren't very many options, but I was gonna share one of the, the app that you wanna use if you're in town and you need to find an antigen test or a PCR test is called Doctolib. I'll link to it, but it's, uh, it's basically like a, a doctor, a, a medical appointment finding service, and so that's what we use. It's easy, it's free. You'll, you can get your appointment booked online and then go straight in from there. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Hopefully it doesn't rain on us. <sighs> Sprinkling. Fall in Paris. It's so cozy. It's all about it's all about asserting your presence for the cars, Dad. You gotta let them know you're here, and then they'll stop. Yeah, it's big. That's good. It's tough. Now this yep. the area where we got our stuff digitized. Yep. So the pharmacy that we did it at was over there. That's where you got your COVID pass. Exactly. They might do that again now. I don't remember. That, the rules change too fast. I'm not gonna tell you how to get your COVID pass digitized. You can find that online somewhere else because by the time this comes out, it'll be a different place. What a fancy place to get your brain tickled. Done. Yeah, just tickle. A little. She went and pick it up as far as she Oh, that's good. I'm right, following you in. where you're walking. Good to play tourist a little bit. It, tourist, tourism is really back. It's kind of crazy how crowded this is. This is, look at this, this is nuts. It has not been this crowded up here a long time for obvious reasons. It seems like we've been up here at night before. Yeah, but you this don't. just has a different impact. Just hitting you. Yeah, it's just hitting me maybe differently. Yeah, maybe you haven't been up here at night, I don't know. Yeah. I don't imagine you had, but. With a foxy fox outside. What's up, stud? A little bit early, but uh. Good, how you doing? This is my dad, you met my dad before? <laughs> That's what I came here for. Has, have you ever struggled with work being associated with your sense of value or self-worth? Oh, 
Yeah, dude, we've had a million conversations about that. Less, less and less. I mean, I feel like I'm making forward progress, but it's still. How do you make forward progress on that? Uh, taking breaks yep. from from work, cultivating other areas of my life, growing up, exploring why I have what the attachments that I have. I still have many of them. All right, let's get this stuff done. <laughs> that was all good. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. when that's yeah, when yeah. you've had it. Yeah, exactly. Are you guys in a stare down? You just trying to wait and see if you like. <laughs> so, this is my friend Ali, who also happens to be a dancer at the Moulin Rouge. And I have to ask you before we go: Is this your first time riding a bike in Paris? This is my first time. Okay, that's important to know ahead of time because, like, yeah, what am I gonna? Okay, we'll, we'll get you up to speed. <laughs> So far, so good. What I was going to ask you is, we talked a little bit last week, you and I were talking about um, like working multiple gigs, like side jobs, hustles yeah. and all that. Yeah. What do you, what's your take on that now, now that you've got some time to focus? <laughs> it's been... There's a jackhammer right there too. <laughs> it's been nice, like I mean, having just one place to go every single day makes a big difference. It kind of takes yeah. a load off of like the mental work you need to do to like organize it. But um, I don't know, I was even getting like the urge last night to like... <laughs> doing some other stuff yeah. on the side and I'd love to take away like get my flex stuff again and like kind of put the programs together but she's got an amazing stretching course if you've got unlimber legs <laughs> but yeah for the meantime it's really nice to just have a one nine to five feel a little bit more normal yeah. I think and just kind of like simplify things and I don't know if it's kind of a light term right now it's been nice it's been really nice but should we keep going? yeah sure I'll keep the Let's deeper questions for later <laughs> Sweet home. Home sweet home. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> you have to let me do my hair. I can put like some lipstick. I can attempt to be slightly better than this. <laughs> we are back into explainer territory a little bit here, and the cool thing is, I've been in the gym for the last three months, which is really exciting. Uh, along with the weight loss, that's been going very well. But on Friday, I put in one of the hardest leg days I've ever put in, and then went to a party that night and stood for like four hours get home till very late and then got up and went and played paddle or padel depending on how you want to pronounce it which is basically like a love job between squash and tennis and it was a lot of fun running around hitting the ball it's great bouncing off the walls but two hours of that followed by that evening uh rugby game between the all blacks and france which was super cool except we had to go all the way to the very 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 top uh so uh, my legs were dead by the end of that like it was a lot of stairs the cool thing was, France actually won. They came out and they just hammered away at the All Blacks. And if you know anything about rugby, which I know very little, uh, I do know that the All Blacks are the uh, number one, right? They're the guys to beat, and they got beat, which was pretty crazy to watch. It was really fun, and uh, I hobbled home and somehow managed to survive. And then the next night we went and saw my buddy Sarah Donnelly perform a uh, little bit of stand-up comedy on a boat, The Last American in Paris. Definitely recommend that you check her out. really enjoying getting more into the comedy scene and hanging out. Obviously, I'm hanging out with a bunch with Paul and just inundated with the delightful amounts of comedy in my life. Uh, same sizzling. It is sizzling. Yeah. Sizzling. Yeah. Sizzling. 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 Oh, it's really hot. Yeah, it's really hot here. What time is it right now? I don't know. 2 a.m.? Hold on. <laughs> we can't, he can't even hold read on, his on, watch. No, no, no. It's, it's for the vlog. Oh. 
<laughs> it's really late. But you had a great show tonight. Thank you. Yeah, you did I'm, great. Thank you. And Jay is great. I'm so glad you got to come. I am glad I got to come too. And now we're having French onion soup at 2 in the morning. <laughs> Is it two in the morning? Bon appetit. And they all live so much closer to here than I do. It's not fair. But they're just a good group of people and I'm, I've really enjoyed uh, spending some time with them and also staying out super late and also didn't get home till like three in the morning that night. So great, rough, but great. I think that gets us pretty well caught up to be honest. I mean, obviously the thing is I'm still gonna have to work probably for the rest of my life and that's fine. I think there's a way to have a healthy relationship with work and I enjoy it. I'm so grateful to be able to do this for a job. This was never, I never thought that I would be making YouTube videos as my job. I thought I'd be making YouTube videos about the things I was doing. I really enjoyed vlogging so much when I started and I, and I really still love doing it now, but I think there's a healthier relationship that can be had between the two. And I haven't figured it all out yet exactly, but I also think that taking the time and being fortunate enough to be in a position where I can prioritize my health first, whether that's my emotional health, my spiritual health, my relationships, all those things, is going to really help me to reorient myself and coming back to how I vlog, to how I make videos of whatever kind and whatever projects come next so that I can kind of have a nice slow burn towards a long-term future success instead of the really quick high burn that turns into just a gamble where I'm gambling my life and my health away in hopes of hitting it big, in hopes of making something happen. Um, when in reality, the odds of that happening are pretty low and even if you do succeed, what, what good is wealth and success if you're a husk of a human and don't have your health or any good relationships or just a life that you built for yourself? So that's what I wanna focus on primarily right now. And I thankfully am in a place where I feel like that has become my focus. And what's really enabling all of this more than anything is disconnecting my sense of worth and value from what I do for work and how I am productive. Those two things have lived in, in tandem and tied together in the same way that my value has been tangled up in unhealthy ways in relationships, how people see me, where I come from, where I'm going, what I've done, how what I've accomplished, all those things. And we'll talk more about that over the course of the next few weeks, but in decoupling those two things from each other, I feel like that's where I've gained a real sense of freedom as much as anything else. And work just happens to be a very obvious one, especially for those who've been watching for a long time and have seen just everything that went into daily vlogging and how it consumed my life forever and all the other side jobs I had and all the other work that I've been doing. This is a very, very real new chapter for me. And it's one that I hope absolutely sticks. And my last thought with that is that I hope I can do a decent job of sharing what this journey has been like uh, because it's really new for me and I, I'm missing a lot of the vocabulary that I would like to have. So it's both, a, it's, a, it's a, a, much like vlogging used to be when it was my favorite thing ever. It was not just sharing my experience but also me working through that experience and coming to better understand myself, where I'm at, where I'm going and how I'm gonna get there. And so I hope that the process of me sharing this both clarifies it for you, but also clarifies it for me and that I can learn from the whole experience and enter into that next chapter all the better and all the healthier for it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing in the journey. And hopefully it's one that we can enjoy together forever. Or, you know, until I guess the sun blows up and consumes us all with it. And then the internet won't exist anymore. That might be good for society, actually, if you think about it. Not existing. Well, I guess that's not, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it would not be good for society.